Hey guys, it's Nick from ND Media. I'm bringing to you another documentary history video. Today, we are going to be discussing the MBTA Orange Line of Boston, Massachusetts. In this video, I'm going to be specifically discussing about the train cars themselves. I'm going to be diving into the history of the line and a little bit about my personal connection and what some of the future plans are as well. So, without further ado, let's begin. So the Orange Line began way back in the early days of the 20th century. Specific date is 1901. The Orange Line originally back then was called the Boston Elevated Railway. And the reason being, well, it was elevated. It was one of the first mass transit systems in all of the US at the time. The original path went from the elevated station of Sullivan Square Terminal, down the Charlestown Elevated, down into North Station, through Downtown Crossing and Boylston Station, which is now Chinatown, and finally back out to the Washington Street Elevated over to Dudley Station Terminal. I'm mainly going to be talking about the time period after the Causeway Street Elevated closed, since the time and dates for that route are a bit vague. So we're going to jump right into the 1950s. During that time, the T had a fleet of Pullman Standard heavy rail cars for the Orange Line. These cars are known as the 1100s. The 1100 cars saw service on both the Elevated and Northern Expansion and reason being the Charlestown Elevated closed in the 1940s because of a derailment and the MTA decided we need to replace this with something a bit safer since at the time the Charlestown Elevated was nearing 50 years old and so in 1960 the MTA began construction of the Norton Expansion and with it came five brand new stations those brand new stations being Community College, Sullivan Square, Wellington, Malden, and Oak Grove the 1100s were used on this line until around 1981 when they were eventually replaced by a newer fleet later that year. That new fleet is the current fleet we see today, which are the Hawker Sidley 1200s. The 1200 fleet was built between 1979 and 1981 by Hawker Sidley Canada, now Bombardier Transportation of Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. The dimensions of these cars were 65 feet long and 9 feet wide. With three pairs of doors on each side and 44 seats, these cars were a vast departure from the older cars. Specific improvements were a modern cab design with in-body sliding doors, lit roll signs, easy passenger assistance button at the front of the cab, more seating, and a nice spacious standing area. Other technical improvements that came with this car were a brand new traction motor design with a new intake, an upgraded signal system for more adaptability, and new brake systems with a redesigned air compression system for more reliable stopping. As for the exterior of the cars, they were given a shiny paint job of bright orange on the bottom, white for the top half, and a nice shade of stone gray for the roof. These cars were dubbed Orange Blossoms by the community, since they did look like orange blossoms with their nice shiny paint. As the years went on, mainly from 1980 to 1987, the public was getting quite annoyed by the Washington Street Elevated. People particularly complained about how loud it was and how it made the streets seem dark. Since the old steel girders and platforms were built right above the streets, they were blocking natural sunlight and casting long shadows onto the road. Meanwhile, the MBTA heard these complaints and were trying to think of a way how they could change this. Meanwhile, the state of Massachusetts was planning to build a giant highway where the current Southwest Corridor lays today. When the public heard about this plan, they did not like this plan. So they argued with the state of Massachusetts to have something else put there. Eventually pressured by the public, the state of Massachusetts called off the project to another bidder. The MBTA took the reins of what, what the project was and brainstormed what they thought the space could be used for instead of a highway. After about a year of planning, they finally had something. So, the MBTA proposed a $791 million project to create a line for the Amtrak and commuter rail to connect from the Mass Pike to Route 128. After this proposal went through and got approved, the MBTA got to work. Concrete was poured down over the Southwest Corridor to create the foundation for the new tracks, and eventually after pouring the concrete, they started laying down tracks for the commuter rail and Amtrak. Alongside all of this, 
the MBTA was trying to figure out what they could do with the Washington Street Elevated, and they had come to the idea that they should run the Orange Line side by side with the commuter rail and Amtrak. They decided to build 10 new stations to replace the five that they had on the Elevated. This was done to increase rideability access to commuters. The stations that were to replace the Elevated were Tufts Medical Center, Back Bay, Massachusetts Avenue, Ruggles, Roxbury Crossing, Jackson Square, Stony Brook, Green Street, and finally the terminal station of Forest Hills. Alongside all of this, they decided to have a bike and walking path run along the tracks on the surface. They had several parks be put in place where the new stations would surface. This was to help beautify the neighborhood with nice walking paths and parks. As construction neared the stages of being ready, the MBTA prepared the 1200s to have a test run along the Southwest Corridor. After those tests were done, the MBTA was ready to make the switch. And so, the MBTA alerted the public of the upcoming switch and made a bus route run along the current elevated stations of the Orange Line. This was done to help prevent service disruptions and allow people to get to work even during the transition from the elevated to the underground extension. But on the last day of the switch, the MBTA decided to do something special for the public. So at midnight on April 30th, 1987, the MBTA ran one last train over the elevated. People gathered with champagne, cameras, and video recorders to ride one of the very first elevated mass transit systems for the very last time. I see you out taking photographs, why? Well, it's a part of history. You'll never see this again in, uh, in Boston, and you know, it's been here for over 100 years. And what brings you out today? Because I knew it was closing and I wanted to take my son on it because he'll never be here again. It's like getting old and dying, I suppose. Soon, service began over the Southwest Corridor route on May 4th. Passengers adjusted to this new line with the MBTA staff at every new station, showing people where to go and helping them figure out which new stations were the old stations. The MBTA also charged no fare for the first week to help riders adjust. Eventually, the project was completed in June of 1987, and the last of the elevated structures were torn down in 1989, ending one of the first elevated transit systems in all of U.S. history. Since 1989, not much has changed besides the cars aging and running along the Southwest Corridor daily. But in 2002, I was born, and that following year, I was adopted by my loving parents and flown back to the US, and back then my parents lived on Bourne Street in Jamaica Plain, just a 14 minute walk from Forest Hill Station. Now what makes the Orange Line and the Southwest Corridor so special to me is what my mom used to do with me on the weekends. She would take her bike which had a booster seat in the back, and she would put me in the booster seat, and she would ride along the Southwest Corridor Park by the Orange Line. And I would always listen very closely for a train to go by, since at the time I was fascinated by them. But what really made me so attached to these cars and the line itself was the sound that the cars emitted when rolling over the tracks that were laid on the concrete. I'll give you an example of what the sound was, because at the time it was unlike anything I had ever heard. Anytime I would hear rumbling or iron on iron, I would tell my mom to stop and she would lean the bike up against the fence and I would peer out and see the train moving by. And I was just fascinated since it was so cool at the time. Since the year 2000, the MBTA has somewhat neglected the cars in upkeep and cleaning as well as everyday maintenance. And as the years went on, the Hawker Sidleys were starting to show their age. Passengers particularly complained about the failing doors, constant breakdowns, and maintenance checks, as well as the very awful noise that came from the brakes when some of the cars stopped. The MBTA said that they would address these issues with a plan to do an overhaul program to the cars and have each one completely refurbished from wheel chassis to passenger cab. But unfortunately, after a hard winter in 2012, causing several of the Orange Line cars to fail completely, the MBTA knew the outdated design of the cars needed to be addressed. 
The specific issue that the cars were having was the design that Hawker Sidley came up with the traction motor. And the traction motor is what is responsible for propelling the train to go forward, backwards, and also put it into neutral. What the problem was with this outdated traction motor design was that the intake was located around 3 inches above the tracks, which is not that much space. And when snow piles up on the tracks, it causes snow to get caught up in the traction motor intake, which is bad since the traction motor requires air, specifically for main functions like using the brakes, closing and opening the doors, as well as propelling the train. And because the snow was piling up, it was causing severe delays on the orange line because if there's no intake on the traction motor, it causes the entire system to fail, which was causing delays, breakdowns, and several other passenger frustrations. And the MBTA needed to fix this immediately. So, in spring of 2013, they decided that the cars themselves had to be replaced. And so the MBTA held a meeting with some of the top subway car manufacturers to hold an auction for who would be the company to build these new Orange Line cars. Some of the companies who participated in this were Bombardier, Kowalski, Alstom, as well as this new company called CNR. Eventually CNR won the contract and became the new builder for these new Orange Line cars. After the planning and prototyping that CNR did, they finally had a concept and pitched it to the MBTA. The MBTA liked it and approved it for being built. Eventually, that car was built in 2017 and was shipped over to the US in 2018. And all during 2018 and most of 2019, the MBTA has been doing a lot of rigorous testing to this car, putting it through all the tests that it needs to be approved for everyday use. Some of the improvements for the interior of these cars were a brand new cab design with modern LED lighting, LCD panels displaying the destination and stop, along with other connections like bus connections and the commuter rail connections, as well as more accessibility options like wider doors and more space for people who are disabled or who need priority seating. A specific change that was made to the exterior of the body of this car was that the entire exterior was made of stainless steel. This choice was made to help make the cars last longer since stainless steel is a more durable material than just normal steel. Since steel is susceptible to rusting and corrosion after a prolonged period of time of being in the elements. Another thing that was improved with these cars were a brand new signal system. Specific improvements to this signal system were the ability to track a train where it is and what its current stop is, as well as how fast it's going and how long it's been on the line for. Other than these new cars, the orange line doesn't seem to be changing much anytime soon. The MBTA has said that the new orange line cars will be completely replacing the Hawker Sidleys by around 2023, and at that point, I'm going to be off at college and I might not be able to ride these things for much longer. But the one thing that is true is that the Seashore Trolley Museum will be getting a pair of these Hawker Sidley cars once the MBTA is done scrapping all the other ones. And once they do get that, once they do get those pairs, I plan to go visit them at the Seashore Trolley Museum since these cars really do hold a special place in my heart since I grew up with them. I've I've rode them when I was little. I've seen them on the Southwest Corridor path and they're just very special to me. They hold a very special place in my heart. And I really hope that some of you who are watching also have special connections to these to these cars like I do since they really are since they really are somewhat unique and I hope that some of you might want to share those stories or special connections with me down in the comments below. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and also join my new Discord server. As always, this is ND Media, signing off. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye!